All right. All right, we're recording now. Uh, my name is Michelle. I'm a yard advisor here at Sunday. I have a BA in environmental studies. I am a master gardener in my county. Um, I've been a landscaper for eight years. I was a florist for a few years. And here at Sunday, um, one of my jobs is just to troubleshoot people's lawn issues. Um, and a lot of that can include yellowing lawns. So this is our agenda for today. Um, summer dormancy, septic tank and leach fields, mowing, fungus and pests, heat stress, drought, and pet spots. Um, you might notice on here that fertilizer burn is not on this list. Um, nitrogen burn is a really rare using Sunday. If we see a burn, it's often because um, best practices weren't followed and fertilizer was applied to a, like a drought or heat stressed lawn. And so that further stressed and exasperated it. Um, so won't be discussing that today, but if you do have questions, just write them in that Q&A box and we'll get to those. Actually, sorry about that. Let's go back. So this is a, a lawn in dormancy, right? And um, one way to tell it, it's all yellow, um, but sometimes it can, it can go piece by piece, uh, but it's not dead. You know, it's just um, it's just trying to survive those really hot temperatures. So cool season grasses get this hey, summer. Hey, Michelle, actually, just to jump in real quick, and yeah, uh, one of the questions we got already from Judith. Really good question. Um, so looks like we're going to be discussing pet spots later tonight. But um, can yellow spots be created by other uh, forms of wildlife like deer? Um, should will that be covered in the pet spots? slide, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, so usually if they're closer to the, um, if their urine is more concentrated, that's when we notice it more. So we see it with dogs a lot because, you know, maybe they squat or uh, bunny rabbits, but yeah. So uh, possibly deer definitely could happen. And, and what we'll um, use to address those, we'll use the same techniques for deer as we would um, dogs. Good question. So um, this map shows spring, summer, fall, and then this is the growth uh, pattern of grasses. So cool season grasses are are a lot of um, on the United States. It's you know central and northern. Those are cool season grasses: Kentucky, bluegrass, fescue, and rye. And warm season are for southern states for the most part. Um, Cool season grasses, you know, this graph, they just take off in spring. All you're doing is mowing. This is the best my lawn's ever looked, right? And then in the summer, like, what happened? Um, it doesn't always doesn't always go dormant, but it does slow down a lot. It stops growing. You don't need to mow. And that's just due to heat. Um, uh, cool season grass is like temperatures between 50 and 80 degrees. Once we get outside that 80 degree temperature in summertime, they slow way down. And that's just to conserve energy. And then we pick back up in fall. And so during dormancy, all we have to do is just reduce our watering. We can save money um, on our watering bill, can do a half an inch per week. Um, you can even, in extreme cases, do a half an inch for two weeks. It kind of depends on how gold your lawn is, really gold, a lot less water. We just need to keep that uh, that crown alive. And warm season grasses, as you can see here, takes a long time for them to kind of get up and get growing, um, but they look excellent usually um, during summertime and they're thriving during this high heat temperature. And Michelle, we do have a, another question here, um, from Cheryl. So her grass is turning almost a light lime green. Um, she wants to know, is this the same? Is a light lime green color the same as a yellowing lawn? Is that what it'll develop into? Or could it be a completely separate factor? No, typically that might be a watering issue. Um, 
uh, overwatering and underwatering can start changing colors. Uh, Calorisis is another name for that. And so I would monitor and make sure I'm doing a deep and infrequent watering pattern. Um, if we're not getting enough oxygen to the grass, um, it can start turning lime green. And how we get oxygen to the grass is taking days off watering. Good question. Um, and if you need recommendations on watering, we are here to help. We have a shed article. Um, the shed is our blog article. It You can type in deep and infrequent. I'm sorry. There's a kitty cat that joined us, <laughs> excuse me. You could type in deep, uh, watering deep and infrequent, and that will um, teach you how to water for your area. So that's a really great uh, video just to see if you're getting enough or too little. So the septic tank and leach fields, a lot of people have septic tanks. So I really wanted to include this in the slide. You know, the browning grass here, this is just an aesthetic problem. The grass is not dead. It will recover in fall. And the main reason for that is there just isn't enough soil between your septic system and the surface of the ground. You don't want to add soil and you don't want to add extra water. Both those things could be harmful to your septic system. So pick your battles here, right? I don't, I don't think the grass is as important. Um, you, so you could either just let this go gold. Um, I'm also going to include this um, alternative kind of landscaping around septic systems. This is from the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. And so they kind of give you some shallow root ground cover you can put out um, if you wanted to try something different. But you can't build over septic systems. Um, you don't want to add more water. And so this is just more of living with um, living with this problem during summer when you get it. Um, otherwise, you might want to try a different landscaping technique. And we'll send that um, PDF out in the follow-up email to you guys. Michelle, before we dive in, sorry, we were getting a lot of great questions. Right. <laughs> so going back to, um, you had noted allowing the lawn to go gold, right? Um, so potentially in areas above the septic tank, for example. So Mike's asking, if we water less, but we still see yellow spots or the grass going gold, right? Is that a, a bad sign? Is it bad to let the lawn go gold? Or um, is there a point where, can it not necessarily be, can it be a good sign if we start to see yellow spots in the lawn per se? I don't think it's necessarily a good sign. Normal might be the right word. Um, for it to start going yellow, but we want to definitely identify if it's if those spots look normal, as in are they you know pest or fungus? We'll kind of be discussing how to identify those. Are they pet spots? Um, as the lawn going gold, you know it's going to happen sort of a little more evenly and probably on on a similar time frame as the rest of the grass for the most part. Perfect. And then we've actually had a couple of questions, one from Donna and then one from Carl as well, asking, is it good to, to mix a cool season grass and a warm season grass, right? Looking at that chart, it seems like you're, you'll be playing to both grasses, um, pros, if you will, right? And we'd be able to, to maintain a green lawn the entire year. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, it will be patchy. And that's why I say that I would not do that. Um, it will be patchy. And so I highly recommend sticking with one. Um, you know, usually if you do a warm season grass, your neighbors have warm season grass. So everyone's lawn is kind of going through the same, like it's winter time, it's a little more brown, going through the same thing. Um, and then if you mix it, you're just gonna have a lot of various spots. And also they have different needs. We'll be discussing mowing in this. Oh, right uh, soon. And those are another reason, you know, we, we care for them just slightly different. Any other ones, Will? All set for now. Thanks, Michelle. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you guys. Great questions. So this uh, mowing, the yard and the yard advisors were all together at a sod farm and and we were looking at this sod of Bermuda grass and they just mowed one section. Just to show you that when we let Bermuda grass, specifically warm season grass, get kind of longer than we mow it, 
we'll see yellow spots because we're now shading uh if th this long grass is shading that those grass blades and that's what makes it yellow and so these spots aren't unnatural but it's just due to letting the grass go a little longer and we also want to incrementally um mow low there's a one-third rule and this should we should try to follow this the best we can because mowing is like an injury to the grass. And so if we go from, you know, really tall to really short, that's a big injury for the grass. And the grass has to use its precious stored resources and its roots that it's saving for food to now go heal itself. And so we don't want to do that. We want to, you know, slowly, incrementally uh, mow lower. And times you might want to low, mow lower is like right before overseeding in the fall, you might want to get a little closer so you can get that seed into the soil and get the sunlight to the to the soil to germinate. But let's incrementally um, work our way down there because of that stress. And um, four different grass types. This top part is cool season bottom part is warm season. Um, they have different mowing heights recommendation recommended and that is a very much for a purpose. Um, if we let these grasses grow a little longer, um, they can be stronger, they can shade out weeds. If we keep these grasses a little tighter, um, not as long, they can grow laterally. Uh, the warm season grasses and not just vertically and sometimes we want those grasses to spread well um, and not get so lanky um, they grow in a in a you know both by root and um, by lateral growth so by mowing we can keep them growing at, at kind of the way they're intended and looking really aesthetically nice and then this is my um PSA everyone public service announcement sharpen your mower blades uh, it's a really important part, as we said, mowing's an injury. So getting a really clean, sharp uh, cut is a huge part of making your grass grow healthy and ba bounce back from injury. And sometimes when we have a dull blade and we're mowing, the top tips are all yellow. And we're like, wow, the grass looks really bad. It looks yellow. And that's simply just because those, got, those tips got frayed um, from the mower, they were ripped and torn, and then they were able to dry out from the sun. And that's what's causing a sort of yellow sheen over the lawn. So we have a video on how to sharpen your mower blades at GetSunday.com. And I highly recommend everyone do that just because it's, uh, it's so good for the grass. Okay, fungus. So Fungus, this is, uh, I love like what causes it because it's just like everything. <laughs> high humidity, favorable conditions, high humidity, wet soil that drains poorly, we could help that with a little aeration, excessive thatch, raking, um, we can rake or use a thatch machine, soil temperature above 60 degrees, temperature between 60 and 90 degrees, oh, and even more so 80 and 90. So 60 and 90 degrees favorable temperatures for fungus. So that's summertime. Um, but the main takeaway is this excessive moisture. Again, watering every day is, is not the best water type of watering for any grass type. And that type of watering with this kind of heat can uh, lend to fungus. And fungus is often like yellow spots. We see a lot of yellow spots from fungus and they can turn into bare patches um, and they could be pretty damaging. And so what we want to do is definitely, um, you know, use a fungicide if it's, if it's brown patch is a type of fungus or um, with other funguses like leaf spot that are a little more common and you can actually see the spots on the leaves, we just want to dry out the lawn and, and try and get those conditions to, to change. And so um, the best way to not get a fungus is to prevent it with those practices of deep end and frequent watering. Um, not letting our grass blades get so long that they're falling over on each other and now they're creating moisture on the blades. We want the water in the soil, not on the grass blades. Um, watering 
in the early morning. That's why that's such a good practice because the sun comes out and dries those grass blades, but the water's in the soil where we need it. If we water at night, you know, we're going to have that water sit on the grass all night long and that could just harbor fungus. And with mowing, um, if we are also having dull blades, the fungus is entering right through that frayed area. Then we might be using a fertilizer like our Sunday nutrients. And um, we didn't notice the yellow spots prior and it exasperates the issue because now we've added uh, fertilizer, some amounts of salts in there and, and the fungus is responding to that. So we don't wanna add more water to issues like this. We see yellow spots, like maybe it's dry. Well, it might not be dry. Can we look and see if we see any of these spots on our grass blades? Our grass blades should just look green, you know, no, no lesions on there. Um, are there irregular spots throughout the lawn? That might be a fungus. And so again, we dry it out. Um, we, have to, we can repair um, with seed. And we can use a fungicide if it's got a uh, pretty large, uh, that might be a good route to go. Any questions about that? Let's we do have a, a few, Michelle. So um, Chuck is wondering, what about mushrooms? Uh, do mushrooms follow the same uh, fungus recommendations? Not really. Um, mushrooms are great decomposers and they often show up when there's, uh, you know, wood, mulch around. Um, sometimes just maybe some mulch has gone into the lawn from a garden bed or, or a tree ring area and some mushrooms are there. They're out there decomposing. Uh, mushroom the fairy ring is one of the mushroom fungus issues that forms a full circle ring and that is you know very not uh, it's it's not a bad um, fungal problem to get just a little drying out you can mow those down and, and everything will be okay. And so in terms of mowing as well, so we received a few questions, um, one from Bob with Centipede, uh, wondering if a lot of rain, <laughs> it'll be a jungle if we go a significant amount of time without, without mowing. And then um, a couple of questions regarding how long to wait in between cuts, one from, from Michael. So we know it at the beginning, right? If the grass is starting to slow down, we can put a pause on mowing for the time being, right? But what are your thoughts, Michelle? If it's the summertime and the grass is just growing like crazy, is there a specific time frame or frequency we should be looking at, or is it more of an on as on an as needed basis? Yeah, I like an as needed basis for summertime, um, and just keeping it at if you have a cool season grass, three to four inches. You know that looks like four inches we'll mow today. Let's not do it in the middle of the day. That's not the best, but you know, we, we try. Um, maybe the morning or evening would be a good time, always when the grass is dry and it's not wet. Um, and it shouldn't harm the grass. And just keeping it at the recommended heights is, is good eyeball eyeballing for mowing. And so similar question as well, right? If we're looking to gradually decrease the, the blade height, right? By only removing less than one third per cut. Is there a specific time that we need to wait in between different mows or? Um, Ooh, that is a good question. Will, do you have any insight on that? I'm thinking like a week. Yeah, I'd say that sounds, that sounds good to me, right? I think as long as we just do sort of a gradual decrease, that, that sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, typically it's like, oh, every two weeks time, but it really depends on how awesome your grass is doing, right? If you just fertilized with Sunday and it's, and it's really growing, you know, it might be every week, not every two weeks. Um, but yeah, a, a week break would be great. That's a good amount of healing time. And if you've got those clean mower blades, um, you're definitely okay within a week. And it can heal real quickly. Okay. Okay. So um, pest issues. I chose these photos because it, isn't that frustrating? I mean, look at those photos. Like it's so hard to know if you have a pest issue. I mean, any of that could be from anything, right? But so this is from chinch bugs and this is from sugarcane beetle. I think the big takeaway with pests is, is like, did this happen kind of quickly? Um, has it happened before? 
you know, is if is this is a brand new kind of yellowing sweeping through the lawn, um, maybe maybe we should check and see if this there's a pest issue afoot. Um, so one way, easy way to do that is take a gallon jug of water at two tablespoons of dish soap, and you pour it over the grass where the green and the yellow meet because we assume that the pests are moving out into greener pastures. And then we see what floats up to the top, take a photo and identify it because we want to get the correct pesticide. Um, we don't wanna just get grub control if we have chinch bugs, we wanna get chinch bug control. And again, to me, you know, it's a really tough one, but if you're just puzzled over what's happening with the lawn and the yellow spot, it's worth trying um, and just going outside and seeing if you see any pests. Okay, uh, heat and drought stress. Um, so drought has this blue gray tint to it. I mean, you can just see, you can just see this blue color. Um, the leaves start curling and, and you know, yellow gets in that color as well. There's just like this blue sheen almost um, with drought. And then it can turn to brown. Um, so if possible, water twice a week at a half an inch per session, um, early morning waterings. So cycle soaking, really important, especially um, anyone on a hillside who has a slope in their yard or, or maybe, you know, just um, like they don't want runoff going off of the grass and into the sidewalk or, or anything like that. Cycle soaking is excellent for that. So you you run your sprinkler system maybe half the time and then just stop, give it like 10 minute break and then run the rest of the system. We're just allowing it to really soak into the soil um, instead of you know filling up and spilling over. So cycle soaking is a great practice. Some people water their lawns that way. They water early morning and they do half you know, at 6 a.m. and then the second half of that watering at 6.30. And, um, and they just take that little break. It's really good for getting uh, water in evenly to the lawn and it's not pooling. Um, we wanna reduce foot traffic if we have um, drought conditions. We don't want a lot of traffic on the ground. It's just gonna injure it more. Try not to mow um, or mow very tall. And then um, we have a heat and drought preventative patch. Uh, works great. Lawn aid, um, and it's got seaweed and potassium, and so that's really uh, good nutrients for you know just fighting off um, harsh conditions. And so again, it's a preventative patch. It's not meant to be used. You know, I'm experiencing drought. It's not meant to be used over the top of it. It's meant to be used uh, prior to seeing drought. Um, you know, June might be a good time for this pouch. Uh, really depends on the lawn and what's been happening with your local climate. And then water gauge placement. So where I where I start with um, almost all yellow spots, I just take a tuna can or a cat food can, and I put one out in the yellow spot area and one out in a dark green spot area. Water the lawn just as normal, take a ruler and measure and see if these are getting the same amount of water. I mean, you wouldn't believe how many times sprinkler systems get, you know, clogged a little, calcified, get off track, they're spraying in the wrong direction. Um, and this way we can tell, is this a water issue? And even if this area is getting a lot of water and this isn't, well, that might be a sign because like we said, calorisis, that yellowing of the lawn, um, that can happen from too much water. So we could say, oh, wow, this one gets like a ton of water, like two to three times more than this spot. Maybe I need to reduce my watering. Um, so that's just a really simple way uh, to figure out if your sprinklers are working correctly and they're spraying good, or if you don't have sprinklers and you're watering yourself, you can see, am I getting that 0.5 inch per session kind of amount for that deep watering? Um, tuna cans and cat food cans are the way to do that. Right. Okay, and um, pet spots. 
Um, so this this line has um, uh, pets and we know pet spots because they have this very bright yellow and then a dark green circle around them. And so the dark green sort of like it's fertilized from the urine, but these spots can lead to bear patches and it can cause um, it can cause a lot of damage, you know, if the dog goes out in the same spots. So Sunday, we are super pet friendly here. We love our pets. We have a product um, that has a surfactant in it, which helps kind of pull that urine into the soil and help dilute it. It can be used preventatively. We spray it over the lawn, allow it to dry, and it will help not create these spots. And we can also use it to go and try and uh, help remedy these before we have to reseed an area. So one of my favorite pouches here at Sunday um, can be purchased a la carte if it's not in your plan or anything, but you have pets and you have yellow spots. I mean, if you have pets, there's a good chance that they're leaving some sort of spot in your lawn. If you don't um, have pet patch, you can just use water. And if you see them pee, go out and dilute it. And um, solution to pollution is dilution and just uh, dilute the urine and that will have this uh, very similar effect. Well, not really a preventative way, but it will help take care of creating these spots. And Michelle, and I know we're coming up on time here, but we do have a, a few questions regarding um, pet spots and how to tackle them. So uh, Mark brought in four yards topsoil, regraded the lawn, had a beautiful lawn at the beginning of the season, uh, but now he's starting to see some yellow spots. He does have a dog, a couple cats. Um, cat and dog are both in the backyard. He's added some lime, treated for grubs, but the yellow spots are are still there. So your thoughts, could it be pet spots or do you think it could be something else? Very likely it's pet spots. I definitely give Pet Patch a try and you could also use it to go out to those yellow spots and try and um, see if they can bounce back a little quicker. Um, I'm concerned that going from spring to summer uh, changed a lot. I mean, as we mentioned, the grass is just not as um, it's not growing as much. And so we're not like trimming off a lot of the portions and we're getting like fresh new growth. Um, but one thing you might want to just look at is um, any compaction areas, take a screwdriver, go out to the yellow spots and stick them in the soil. See if the soil's a little hard there. Maybe you might need some aeration. Um, and then I'd also check some watering too. More than happy to help uh, this customer, if they want me to look into them, you can um, email webinars at getsunday.com. I'd be happy to um, look at the spots and help troubleshoot that. And then um, just in term of repair, right? So we have a couple of customers, Damu and then um, Serena as well, asking they have pet patch um, in pet lawn, uh, or potentially just some pet spots. <laughs> is this a good time to be looking to overhaul the lawn uh, for a cool season grass or a warm season grass, or is it better to, to hold off for the time being? So they have our um, pet bundle, is that correct? correct? Yep, yeah, okay. so we have pet yeah. patch and pet lawn. And in, yeah. um, I believe San Diego with uh, warmer upper 80s right now. <clears throat> okay. So there's no, no nitrogen in pet patch, which is good. So it definitely can be used and we're not going to have a negative effect from using it, um, you know, regardless of conditions, but we still wanna follow best practices, maybe applying it early morning or evening if you're dealing with a lot of heat, that's just always a good idea with water. Um, so I think that would be a great thing to do is use some pet patch. Um, I probably do the whole lawn and I probably use some on the spots as well. And then let's save this seed for fall when the temperatures are good, you know, under 80 degrees consistently, likely September, starting around that area, we can use the seed, um, but we don't want it too hot. We don't want to seed when it's too hot, but you can certainly use the pet patch now. Perfect. And then for anyone who has a uh, warm season grass, um, 
right now, still probably a little bit warmer depending on where you're at, right? To be looking to do too much repair, but when would you be looking to do a little bit more of an overhaul? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little warm now. So you on, on, hmm, let's see. Under 90 degrees is a good time if you're going to seed any warm season grasses. Um, I think that if you're going to do any sod work, you know, around eight, under 80 degrees might be better for any of that kind of work. Uh, mowing should be fine now, watering's fine, fertilizing should be fine for warm season grasses. And um, all aeration, I did mention that, should be done in spring or fall for all grasses because we want the grass in the least amount of stress. All right, and this will be a great time as well for me to plug. <laughs> we'll be having a cool season repair um, webinar later this month for aim with cool season grass, and then leave late August, early September, we'll be targeting warm season grasses. So highly recommend tuning into those uh, webinars if you'd like it, to expand upon these answers, but yeah, definitely, I'd say right now it's a little bit early. <laughs> yeah, definitely make those webinars. They're super great. Um, and then Will can be your host the whole time. <laughs> and that will be awesome. Um, so let's recap. So these are the topics we discussed. As you could tell, there aren't a lot of ways to fix a ton of yellow spots. We've got the pet patch for pet things pet items, we can sharpen our mower blades, we can water deep and infrequent, um, but a lot of this is prevention and, and even in fall, we can do things to help the lawn get stronger, to survive the winter, to bounce back in the spring even better. And then we can prevent yellow spots by doing these best practices of, of watering deep and infrequent, uh, mowing at the correct height with a sharp mower blade, deep thatching in spring or fall. Uh, monitoring our excessive moisture, and then seeding with high quality seed. We, uh, at Sunday, we use A-list seed, which is a, a drought tolerant seed. And our goal is to not use as much moisture uh, on our grass, um, not too much, because people tend to overwater and, and water is precious. Um, so we've got great seed blends. Um, if you're looking to seed this fall, definitely check out Sunday. And then um, we have a ton of resources for our customers. So webinars at GetSunday.com. You've got the webinar team there. We'll answer your questions. Uh, we have a playlist at YouTube of all the past webinars. So you can watch any topic you'd like there. And then um, the shed at GetSunday.com. This is our blog section written by our science team. All things on, hundreds of articles, tons of great information. You can't not learn about grass if you're if you're going through there. And uh, Will, thanks so much for helping today. It's been an absolute pleasure, Michelle. And of course, I have one more for you. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so we do have a question from Sharon real quick. Uh, she's noticed flies crawling out of the soil uh, between her house and, the and her neighbor's yard. Is there a good remedy? Um, flies, not bees. Correct, yep. Does bug do work on flies? I don't know. I don't believe so. I think that would probably be, we'd want a little bit more information to. Um, yeah. So yeah, Sharon, I'd say cluster flies. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say we will take uh, your contact information. We'll be sure to get in, in touch with you and we'll follow up. Like we said, just want to make sure considering the region um, yeah. and recommendations, they're all suitable. So we'll be in touch. We'll definitely, yep. We'll definitely do some research for you. Uh, you stumped us. I am not positive. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Have a great day.